everyone. <coughs> to all of you who are here present in the church and all of you who are watching uh, from your homes this weekend. I have something here on the altar and I have to tell you about it. This is a nice little ceramic thing that's very regional. This morning we celebrated the first communions of seven children here and the confirmations of five teenagers. The First Communion children wrote special letters to God, and they're in here. And they warned me that they're secret, and I better not look at them. So we're not going to. However, I, I promised them that at all the Masses this weekend, we would let you know about these. And remember the children who made the First Communion, and the teens that were confirmed. And we're going to leave them right here. God listens well to children. And some of those prayers, many of them, are also for us. This weekend, this weekend we're celebrating God's tremendous love for us, God's mercy, God's forgiveness. And we're also celebrating that we too are called to forgive as God forgives. But we have to start with ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves first, and then and only then, receiving the love of Jesus Christ, are we able to forgive others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Sisters and brothers, in the process of forgiveness, we go through a lot of feelings. There's anger, there's resentment, there's bitterness, maybe even hatred. And we need healing. And healing only comes from the Lord Jesus. Sometimes through other people, but always from God. So let's look into our hearts and recognize anything we've said or done, anything that's part of our lives that is unforgiving. We remember the persons who may have done something to us so long ago that it hurt us and we carried that baggage around with us. We want to let go of it and open our hearts to healing and ask the Lord for forgiveness for any wrong we say or do against them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. We pray the glory of Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And we open up our hearts to receive well the proclaimed word of God. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing 
from the Lord. Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your brother. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before him, who owed him a huge amount. 
Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife and his children and all his property in payment of the debt. And that servant fell down. He did him homage and he said, Be patient with me, Lord, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of the servant let him go, and he forgave him the entire law. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a, a much smaller amount. And he seized him and started to choke him and demanded, Pay back what you owe me. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid the entire debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed. And they went to their master and reported the whole affair. And his master summoned him, and he said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt, because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant, as I have pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers, until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do, unless each of you forgives your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. These really are powerful readings. You know, be sure when you go home, those of you who are at home, look up these readings for this weekend. Pray about them, share them with your friends, talk about it in your families, reflect on them. This is something that touches all of us, and it's, and it's foundational in our life as Christians. Uh, Saint, who was it? Saint Peter is the one who asked Jesus, Hey, if somebody offends me, how many times do I have to forgive him? Seven times? And remember, for the Jews, seven was a biblical number. It meant an infinite number of times. Seven times? In other words, do I have to keep on forgiving? And Jesus says, no, not only seven times, but seven times, seventy-seven times. That's three sevens in a row. So an infinite number times an infinite number. You and I hear the Lord saying that to us. I know sometimes when I've been upset at someone, and I'll hear those words of Jesus, I want Jesus to go away, because I don't want to accept those words. There's something I heard this past week, in fact it was in a homily, a weekday homily that our own Father Peter Connolly was preaching, and he used an image that touched me very much and reminded me to look into my own heart. It was an image that I'd known but I'd forgotten about. About a year ago when I moved to Tucson, well since then, I have seen and encountered more rattlesnakes than I care to count. <laughs> Many rattlesnakes. You know, and it is a fact that not only rattlesnakes, but other snakes too. A rattlesnake, when a rattlesnake is cornered and can't get away and sees no way out, it gets so furious, so infuriated, that it begins to bite itself. And that's not a good thing. It probably doesn't die from its own venom. But it begins to bite itself. Well, I got to thinking that um, when you and I hold on to feelings of resentment and bitterness and anger and even hate against others, we're really biting ourselves, aren't we? We're biting ourselves. Because the thing is, we need healing. The deeper harm is to ourselves, not to them. And the Lord Jesus wants us to be free, to be free of those things. We need healing, but we can't heal ourselves. We have to go to the source. So I would like to read for you a short prayer. I think I wrote this, but I don't remember. <laughs> I think I wrote it in the past, or at least part of it. It's a healing prayer for past hurts. 
Make it your prayer as well. Lord Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, go back into my past memory today. There have been a number of years that some things have hurt me, troubled my heart and soul. Every hurt that has ever been done to me in my body or my emotions, please heal those hurts. Every hurt that I have knowingly or unknowingly caused to another person, bring healing to that hurt too. Also heal the hurts that I knowingly did. Help me to remember them so that I may ask for healing to take place. Please, Lord, give me strength to look at those memories with courage. Lord, if there is anything that I need to do, show me. If I need to go to another person because they are still suffering from my part, let me become aware of that person in my memory. As I do remember, help me to be humble and to ask for forgiveness. I choose to forgive the hurts that are done to me. My tongue will say that I forgive and make my mind and heart come into line with your word. I also ask to be forgiven of the sins and wrongs that I have done. Please, Remove whatever bitterness and resentment may still be in my heart, Lord. I don't want to walk around with that in my life. Fill me with your love and your peace. Let me see my sisters and brothers through your eyes, Jesus, not mine. Let me look at everyone with all the love that I can. And lastly, Lord, help me to put a guard over my mouth every day so that I may always glorify you. Let me be a true Christian witness of your love in me. Please, help me to bring about healing in the hearts of all that I see throughout my days. I love you, Lord, so much, and I am grateful to you because you love me. You make me feel special and at peace. Thank you, Lord, and in your name, Jesus. Together as people of faith, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And knowing that we rely on the Lord for everything, we put before the Lord our prayerful petitions. For the church, that we who are God's people, both in life and in death, may faithfully mediate God's love, mercy, and forgiveness through our words and deeds. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive those who have wronged us, that God will free our hearts, so that we may forgive others as God has forgiven us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deep awareness of God's boundless forgiveness, that in our daily living and our experiences of our weaknesses, we may, we, meet, we may recognize how God's unlimited forgiveness is manifested each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have injured or wronged us, that God's love will heal them and us, so that we may walk together again in God's service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of anger and resentment, that the Spirit will heal those painful experiences and free us to live fully for Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will heal the sick, bring comfort to those who are isolated, give strength to those fleeing violence, and hope to those seeking jobs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions recorded in our Book of Intentions, for the names recorded in the Book of the Dead, and for the special intentions of this Mass. For Donna Duffy Mattis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, O oh God, our loving Father, we learn that forgiveness is divine because it is. Help us to be healed. Help us to forgive, to rely on you, to heal us. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our most loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. Great praise and glory in God's name. For our good and the good of all of God's holy church. O Lord, look with favor on our supplications, and in your kindness, accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times, and seasons. You formed us in your own image, and you set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so, with all the angels we praise you as a joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name 
of the Lord, who is not in the highest. I would like today to use one of the approved uh, Eucharistic prayers for reconciliation. Reconciliation is a process, a word that means turning back toward. When we sin, we turn our backs toward God. When we sin toward each other, to, to each other, uh, we turn our backs to each other. When you have an argument, you turn your back to one another. This is turning around again, eye to eye, heart to heart, with the Lord. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand that you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the great reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, at whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that very same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands, and confessing your great mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the great memorial of death and resurrection of your Son who left this pledge of his great love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with this very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, all the bishops, all the clergy, the religious, the ministers of your church, and all your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her loving spouse, Joseph, with your blessed apostles, St. Alphonsus, and all the saints, and the glorious martyrs, with our sisters and brothers, and those of every race and tongue, who have died in your great friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Jesus Christ, who is our risen Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. I really do feel and believe that of all the things Jesus asks of us, to forgive others is probably the most challenging.
especially when we forget that we cannot do it alone. We need God's grace to forgive others, to enter into that process. It's a very intimate thing, a thing that takes a lot of trust. So let's pray that intimate, trusting prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your great mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await that blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace. It is my peace that I give to you. Lord, do not look on our sins. Look on our faith. Look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and grant to us. There are many symbols, symbolism, in celebration of Mass, and some are really small, like right now, at this moment, you'll always see the priest mingle the body of Christ with the blood of Christ. And that's done, not only, very important, that we are in union with Rome, we are in, union, in unity as a whole church, but more importantly, as a great worldwide community of believers that we all believe the same thing, that the Lord lives, the Lord loves, and the Lord is with us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. ministers will be going forth to the communion stations outdoors and we will in just a moment uh, be praying for prayers of spiritual communion and to our mother for perpetual health before the final blessing.
want to pray, we here in this church pray with you the prayer of spiritual communion written by St. Alphonsus Liguori and used worldwide. Pope Francis has taken a liking to it and uses it. The bishops use it. We're all using it. But it gets to the heart of, of what we believe, that there is no separation in Christ. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you into my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. For this I pray. Amen. And we... All of us belong to the Redemptorist community. We have a special devotion to our Mother of Perpetual Health, and I'd like to lead you uh, all in the Novena Prayer in time in response to the COVID pandemic. Mother of Perpetual Health, with the greatest confidence, we come before your holy picture to beseech your intercession. We think of you, Holy Mother, at the foot of the cross, your heart must have bled to see your son in agony, but your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil. Mother of sorrows, pray for us in this time of trial. Help us not to lose heart. Intercede for your people who are afflicted with coronavirus. Comfort your people who are vulnerable and anxious. Protect health care workers who put their lives at risk. Inspire our leaders to make good decisions. Change our hearts so that we may act responsibly. Teach us to trust in God's love and mercy and to share with you the great joy of having courageously faced up to all the challenges of life. Amen. so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I wish to thank all of you for your presence, whether here in the church, or assisting from your, your homes with your families and your friends. Know that there is a community here that, that loves each and every one. And it's all rooted in the great love that God has for us, and the care that God has for us. Let's try to stay safe and um, be as happy as possible. Okay. The Lord be with you. May our most loving God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.